If I was single right now and I was interested in meeting a man, this is what I would do. Look up your local golf course, find out when men's night is, and see if this golf course has a restaurant inside the golf course. Many do, their restaurants are open to the public. Sometimes they're not if they're a private course. So you gotta do your research here, ladies. Find out when men's night is. So let's say men's night is a Thursday. Grab your friend and have dinner at the golf club same night that men's night is happening. Perfect. You'll be the only women there. You'll be competing with no other woman. This isn't like a regular bar or pick of the guys at the bar. Test it out. Let me know if it works. Hey, so I am at a golf course right now. I don't golf, by the way. I came with my mom, who's like a big golfer, and um, I ditched her to come to the clubhouse and eat because I'm a fat. But that's besides the point. I wanted to get on here and tell you that you need to delete every single dating app, get your app to a golf course, because holy crap, the amount of men here. Like Tiger Woods, hello. I mean, I've always been more of a football and basketball person, but like golf, golf. And like, how cute is this outfit? Hi. Anyways, just wanted to say hi. I want to thank you for the love and also, um, yeah, golf. Oh, and by the way, let me know if you guys have any questions or recommendations for videos that you want to see and obviously follow for more. <sighs> oh, in other news, woman poisoned the boyfriend to death thinking he'd inherited $30 million and she found out it was all a scam. Ina Thea Kenoyer has pleaded guilty to murdering her longtime boyfriend Stephen Edward Riley Jr. by poisoning him with antifreeze. The North Dakota man believed he had inherited $30 million, so did his girlfriend. But soon after, he was dead. Only later was it revealed that there was no such inheritance. Investigators and police found a Windex bottle full of antifreeze in his living room. And women are choosing the bear. They're choosing the bear. Imagine that. Us three girls have never been to Top Golf before. I golf sometimes for fun. And it's going to be my thing for the summer because I need to find a man. You ain't finding a man at the bar. <laughs> not not. And they say that guys don't lead. My men, take this as a sign to continue doing what you're doing, continue getting your money, continue pouring yourself into your hobbies. And there's a lot of women, maybe not all, but a lot of women that will be out there looking for you. Day two of Come Golf With Me. Today we've got a cute little, cute little pattern fit, a little dress. Normally I'm against dresses when golfing because it's not very professional. But I'm trying to get wiped up at the country club. So anyway, cutie little fits. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. A cutie little bow and I flipped out my little ends cuz I'm trying. Does this say please marry me? I don't want to date. Just let's get married. Let's ride the golf cart together. Let me play tennis at the club while you're with the boys doing whatever they do. Like I'm literally right here, but it's fine. Hopefully we see our kitty little boy from yesterday or yeah, wish me luck. Um, oh, it's wet. There were two boys out there today. Cuties. They looked a little older, which was, you know, I'm not, I was like, okay, like, like later twenties, which is perfect, but they were so focused on their golfing and I was just sitting there doo -doo 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 -doo. and they'd like watch me hit every once in a while, but like they were, oh, uh, so today was a little bit of a fail, but the guy at the club was like, oh my God, I'm so happy to see you back. And I was like, thank you. He's an old, old man. I said, thank you so much. I was like, today I'm working on my form. And he's like, do you play? And I'm like, I can't play until like I get good again. And he goes, oh, I'd love to play with you sometime. And I was like, thank you. Thank you. But it was good. Today was good. My form was eh. But it was a good time, good exercise. I sweat, I brought water today. It was a good day, I think. Not, I mean, not golfing wise, but bad rest, good time. Like I said, they're gonna be out there on the prowl for you. Don't look to the left, don't look to the right. Remain focused. Well, maybe look to the left and the right, just a, just a little bit. <laughs> to be honest, 
I don't know what happened, but men golf things. I just love how happy men are on the golf course. Like this one guy hit a really good shot and he was like, this is better than my wedding day. <laughs> I was like, oh, I didn't know you guys were that happy about it. I'm looking for a new book boyfriend. Billionaire, 6'5", brown eyes. Billionaire, 6'5", brown eyes. I'm looking for a new, I'm looking for a new, I'm looking for, looking for, looking for, looking for, looking for a new book boyfriend. Billionaire, 6'5", brown eyes. Hey, yo, no matter what shape, size, pretty, ugly, crazy eyes, straight eyes, <laughs> y'all gonna have to start understanding that if you want a billionaire, you gonna have to get in line. A millionaire, you gonna have to get in line. A thousandaire, <laughs> you gonna have to get in line. I just saw the hottest man I think I've ever seen in my entire life running at 7.30 p.m. on the Strand in Manhattan Beach. And it's a it's a good thing I didn't say anything to him because I think I would have had to cover my eyes if I had to talk to him. To be honest, I don't even think I would date this man because he was so good looking that it would be a liability. Like, who wouldn't be after? I don't want to deal with that. But there's no way he wasn't famous for looking like that. So I'm going to describe him to you. TikTok, if you want to do your thing. Perfect body, tan, blue eyes, dark brown, longish, not long hair. He had a mustache, but not in like a, not in a porn stash way, in the, in the like ugly hot way, but not ugly at all. So. <laughs> Anyways, if anyone knows uh, social media, he's got to be like a fitness something, athlete something. No one has single digit body fat like that for no reason. <sighs> Help. <laughs> I'm like giggling talking about it. It's going to go back to seeing I can't really with a lion. Line. All right, I have good news and I have bad news. So I went back earlier this week and Strandman was there. He actually came up to my friend and me and said hi. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, a little bit of airport effect was happening when I first saw him. Don't get me wrong, he was attractive, but most gorgeous man I've ever seen in my life, like Stephen Kelly hot, no. So we talked and he seemed kind of cool and I was like, I have to go out with Strandman, I can't not. After all of this, you know, so we went out last night and that's where the good news ends. <laughs> it's a personal trainer, by the way, so that makes sense, but he's not famous, thank God. I don't know how to put this other than I have a feeling this guy loved the hair Harrison Bucker speech. I think part of why it took me so long to find Strand Man is he doesn't have TikTok. Or so he says, I feel like 99% of people who tell me they don't have TikTok just lurk on TikTok. Anyway, the words women aren't funny actually came out of his mouth as a complete sentence. So RIP that love story. But if you think I'm done dragging this, you're wrong because we can't let it end this way and my DMs are fire now. So whoever wants to replace Strand Man, it's your turn because that's how we're gonna continue this series. People who should have been Strand Man. Love you, bye. Little did she know, Strandman is probably a Chad, so he says whatever he wants, which he did with you, as pretty as you are, so you know he doesn't care. I don't know if it's because I live in Alberta or not, but every time summer approaches, something deep down inside of me screams, become a rancher's wife. <laughs> what is it? Which one of y'all is going to drive? Mine literally says, go, go to the nearest rodeo tomorrow. Live out your cowgirl fantasies. I would look at someone like Dale Brisby and be like, he's sexy. Then the winter, I go, who is that homeless man? <laughs> I may be an Alberta girl. <laughs> Anyways, just thoughts. Just want to live like a soft cowgirl, like back of the truck, like in the country, watching the stars. Ah! If you've ever asked yourself, why are men approaching me when I'm out in the street going to the grocery store looking like a ragamuffin? This video is for you. This breakdown will be in like finance bro terms just so we can, you know, bridge a gap a little bit so we can all get to understand them here. Think of yourself like a stock, right? Or think of yourself like a product, unfortunately, because that's how they see us. When you're buying a product, you consider all of the factors that go into it, huh? not just the product itself, but it's production, it's shipping, manufacturing, etc. So when you, a girl with a pretty face, goes into the world looking like this, men see that and they say, okay, this is a minimal, minimal effort girl, and I can see she has a pretty face and a banging body, right? These are the factors that are important to me. Your overall production value, pretty low. If I'm going to buy in, this is the time to buy in. Realistically, what you're going to need from me at this point is maybe for me to carry a grocery, maybe for me to chat you up a little bit, right? But there's not actual money that needs to be spent in this current exchange. Pair that to when you hit the streets looking like this, high. The value is high. The value is high. The production is high. The cost is high. 
to buy a drink, you don't have to buy a meal, you now have to buy something in exchange for even a little bit of conversation. When she is looking like a million bucks, when she is smelling like a million bucks, do I have a million dollars to my name? This girl, super attainable. She can, you know, she can be worked with, she can be molded, she can be brought up. But this girl, she's already out of your league. She's already out of your price range. You cannot afford her. She is now the Bugatti. I hope this helps. You know, the logic of some women kills me. When we're talking about basketball records, you want to be unattainable. Michael Jordan probably never ever wants any of his records to be broken. I want to be the greatest. But when it comes to relationships and companionship, why would you ever want to be unattainable? How much sense does that make? And you sit up here and you brag about it as if it's a badge of honor, then you're going to wonder why you don't have a man. It's because you put yourself up on that cliff where nobody even wanted to go and even higher on the cliff with your terrible attitude and even higher on the cliff with your terrible logic and reasoning and critical thinking skills. Man, and now quite honestly, you made yourself something that nobody even wants to attain. With that, <laughs> London, you yeah. cannot walk down the road without no. getting approached. Men once. that are confident are Cheryl. confident. Yeah. I remember once this <laughs> guy, like it was like like um near Clapham Common, so it was a very busy road. <laughs> right. And I was quite drunk walking back from work as I used to on a Friday. <laughs> and I was walking home and I just literally like in, like um, underneath my music I heard like beeping, like loads of horn beeping and stuff, and I didn't even oh. turn around. Anyway, I turn around, this guy has left his car in the middle of the street, blocked up all this traffic, door wide open and was chasing me up the road, <laughs> asking me for my number. And I was I like, love that energy. I'm here oh, for that. It's so funny. And I was like, I'm sorry, I'm in a relationship, which I wasn't to be fair. But I was just like, I'm sorry, I'm in a relationship. I just wasn't interested. That's interesting. A man got out of his car, did you say? ran across the street, possibly causing a traffic jam, could have gotten a ticket, could have injured himself, just to get over there for you to look him in his eye and bold face lie in his face. In his face, talking about I got a man, when it's just that you weren't interested. There's some women out here that want men to make these grand gestures just for the opportunity to say no. You really just want your ego boosted and validation, a little boost to your pride. You want a man to fly you out, pay for my dinner, pay for my drinks, pay for vacations for me and my girls, take me home to meet your parents and all this other stuff, knowing that you're going to say no and you're not interested. Why would any man want to be bothered with that? She's taking pictures in the mirror. Oh my God, her skin's so clear. Why do guys think that they can be nonchalant and it'll attract- oh! Anyways, why do guys think that being nonchalant is attractive to women? Because like, there's nothing of substance to the K. Like, it has contributed nothing to the video. You know what I mean? So there's obviously an ulterior motive. And it was probably so that like, I would think about you more. You know what I mean? Like, you want me to think about you because you want me. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I don't know what your intention was. So do you think you could tell me like, what your intention was when you pressed the K? And also like, what's your Snapchat so we can talk about it more there in private? And also like, what time are you free later? And how many kids are you willing to financially support in the future? Going on the show, <laughs> there's certain requirements. Mm -hmm. One, you're supposed to be single. And for one, she's not. And then... There's no way in hell. The plot twist of hell. Let me find out all that is cooking up the scripts of hell. Let me find out all that is the new Mona, uh, Mona Scott from VH1. Two, there's other things in addition to that that I found out that I'm not gonna put on air because okay. I'm not gonna denigrate her character. Mm. But just simply put, she's she did not resonate with what I'm looking for. Oh, and so okay. that's that's why we are where we are. Okay. Look at her face, child. Look at her face, child. This is the face. This is the face of shame. What is going on? So just to confirm. As of today, you're still single. Correct. Okay. Pick up your eyes. Why do you have that silly look on your face now? Where are all the guys that initiate dates? Raise your hand. Raise your hand in the comments if you are a guy who is single and you initiate dates. I don't think there's a lot of them out there. And I really wish there were more. And I think a lot of women want 
a guy to initiate too. I think there's just this huge disconnect right now. So I met some random guy at a bar last night. We were just literally talking. I was at a singles event that was being held outside. He was sitting in the bar. I didn't want to eat outside, so I came inside the bar, ate next to him. We engaged in delightful conversation. I'm going to say, just based on context cues, he's probably my age. He really did think that I was way much younger than I actually am. Bonus point for him for that. Had a friend with me, my girlfriend was like, I'm done, I wanna go. So I said, that's fine, paid my tab. As I was getting ready to leave, he said, you know, I've really enjoyed our conversation. I'd love to have a drink with you again. Can I get your number? Of course you can have my number. You can have my social, I mean, yes. I didn't give him my social. I am thinking that I would have received a, hey, had a great time, really looking forward to seeing you, or do you mind if we chat, or hey, or something in the last 24 hours. Not anxiously waiting for this. I just kind of thought in the back of my head, it's been almost 24 hours. I hadn't heard from him. Huh, I am in my soft girl era, so I want to make sure that I am not initiating things because I don't want to set that tone in a relationship. I have done that in every other relationship and it has not worked out well for me. And I also am aware that men want soft feminine women. They don't want masculine leaders. And I do that at work. I don't want to do that in my personal life with a guy. So I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait. And if he's not one of those types of men where he's not gonna initiate, he's not gonna reach out to me in the next couple of days and be like, hey, let's go have a drink, then I'm not gonna be the one chasing him. I want him to pursue me. I want him to think to himself, you know, I really wanna see her again. Let me figure that out. Let me initiate, let me reach out to her. Let me tell her that I want to see her and let me set up the date and let me be the one to show her that I want to engage in interaction with her. And then if we start dating or we hit it off, yeah, I'm going to match and I'm going to put in energy and that soft feminine side. I'm going to engage with him. That's how it works. I am just perplexed as to why there's so few guys that are out there who actually will initiate. Even if it means they might get a no, they are still proactively initiating. Where do I find those men? Why aren't more men asking for prenups? Because most men will not become successful unless they are married. Outside of the entertainment industry, men are more likely to be successful if they are married, and women are more likely to be successful if they are single. You don't have to believe me, just Google it. You do know that women are usually probably not gonna be self-made, and it's probably because of teamwork. So when you get married, you're on a team. That concept goes for anything. You gotta pick a better argument. There are a lot of people on this app, especially men on this app, who like to say that marriage doesn't benefit men, but generally marriage most often benefits only men. Whenever a child is born, a woman is typically the person that takes off time to take care of the child. And if there's a stay at home parent, most often it's going to be a woman who is a stay at home parent. And while some men like to say that that is a privilege for the woman, what it really is, is a financial risk that the woman is taking. Bro, if they're married, it's a financial risk for both of them. What are you talking about? It's another silly statement. They're probably agreeing on this. In most cases, okay, you stay home and take care of the children. Well, why would she do that? Because there's certain values, morals, and things that we want to teach our kids. Most oftentimes, women want to stay home with the children and nurture them. I want a little bit more time with my child before I have to go to work. And if I have a man that can provide that for me, then I'll do that. Stop doing this stupid stuff to where you pit men against women when they're in a relationship and they're supposed to be working as a team. What are you doing right now? Giving women more ammo to say stupid stuff to men and then wonder why they're single and no man wants them. She is taking time off from work. She is not furthering her career. She is dependent upon another person to be successful so that she can continue to take care of the children. She's taking a financial risk for the sake of her family. And this is a social norm that a woman is the person who will take a, fi a financial risk, a career risk in order to take care of the family. Men, on the other hand, get the social benefit of saying that they are married and having the support of a spouse and having the support of someone who will take care of his children while he is able to just thrive and work and further his own career. It Correct me if I'm wrong, wouldn't him thriving and furthering his career benefit his family? 
So wouldn't he be supporting his family while his family is supporting him? So the way I can support you is by taking care of the children in the home. And the way that you can support me is by giving me the resources that I'm asking, needing and wanting in order to take care of the home. What are you talking about right now? You really need to put that truck in gear and start doing whatever it was that you were doing instead of getting on this internet talking silly like this. It's true that 50% of marriages end in divorce. It is true that 75% of divorces are initiated by women. So how come men don't want a prenup for their marriage? Most men don't have very much before they get married. They become successful after the marriage. So let's take this argument that men don't have very much and they aren't successful before the marriage. Let's give you that argument. Men still, statistically speaking, make more than women. So I had more than you before we got married. I'm making more money than you before I got married. Do I need a prenup? Maybe, maybe not, but I still have more than you. Bro, like I said, what can Brown do for you? Apparently nothing because this isn't critical thinking, this isn't logic, you probably need to get back to whatever you were doing. I'm being so dead when I ask this, but do men not know how to flirt anymore? Because last week I was at my sister's school and I was just sitting down waiting for her, minding my business. And I was by like the area where the students eat and like hang out. Um, and I knew there was a guy sitting next to like at the table next to mine, but I was minding my business. So I didn't think much of it. Like a couple minutes passed and I feel a presence next to me, like standing next to me. So I turn around to see who it was or if it was my sister or something. And it's the guy that was sitting next to me. He was basically coming up to me and he was like, oh, hey, are you a student here? And I was like, no, I'm not a student here. I'm waiting for my sister. I didn't find it weird because usually when I'm on her campus, like some student comes up to me trying to like chat it up or get me to join their organization or something you know and then i usually explain that i'm not a student there so i didn't mind that he was asking me questions but he literally just asked if i was a student there i said no i thought that was going to be the end of it because i thought he needed like a student's help but anyways he proceeds to take out his phone and hand it to me and without saying much and i was like um and he was like, as he was handing it to me, he's like, oh, well, do you mind taking a survey for me? And I was like, oh, sure. Cause usually it's for like a class assignment or something. Me trying to do my due diligence and help a student out. I was like, oh, for sure. So I get, I get the phone, but mind you, when he hands me the phone, he hands me like the um, keypad to like put my number in. And so I was like, oh, what do you need? He was like, oh, just add your number. And then I was like, okay. So yeah, I put in my number thinking he was gonna send me the survey or something. And so I'm putting in my number and he's just quiet, mute, not a word. Mind you, I get awkward when it's silent. So I start making small talk. As I'm putting in my number, I just ask him, I'm like, oh, what is the, what class is the survey for? And this man, I'm handing him his phone back cause I already put in my number, unfortunately. He gets the phone and he was like, Oh, it's not for a class. I just wanted your number. I thought you were cute. And I was like, <laughs> mind you, I'm genuinely really bad when men flirt with me that like up front. Like I am not an approachable girly. Like I will look at you and just like be like, what the f But I noticed lately, especially since my man passed, I've been so easily irritated with men like Men just walk past me and I see them look at me up and down and check me out and I want to throw up. I like look at them in disgust. So when this man said this to me, I did like I'm smiling because I'm like, oh, trying to talk to the student. And he says that I'm just like, like my face just straight up changes. And I was like, OK. And I didn't know how to ask him to give me his phone back so I could delete my number. So I was like, okay, I already gave this man my number. He's probably gonna text me. I would just not respond to him. <laughs> it was so weird. Cause then he literally doesn't even try talking to me. Like if you're trying to flirt with me, you have me right there. You didn't even have to approach me like that. All you had to say was, hey, I think you're cute. Can I have your number? I would have said no, but you didn't have to do all that. You didn't have to lie. Like. Anyways, I give him his phone back, right? I think he's going to talk to me some more. And I'm like, oh, please leave. He does leave. He straight up grabs his phone and he was like, okay, bye. And I was just like, what the? F 
And as he's walking away, I'm like, oh my God, that was the most awkward interaction of my life. But two, as he's walking by, I can tell he's like giggling as he's walking and looking at his phone because then he just turns around and stares at me. And I'm like, sir. You know, this is funny because while you're talking about the man doesn't know how to flirt, you literally put your number in his phone like he wanted you to do. And there were women in the comments that had to inform her that he actually used pickup. He actually used Riz on you and you didn't know it because he was so smooth about it. He walked up to you, qualified if you were old enough or not. You said yes without knowing. He gave you the phone number. Now why in the world, if he was a student, would you put your number in a student's phone? And you wanna talk about not being able to flirt. <laughs> if you can't recognize a game, then just say that. Now I'm sincerely sorry for your man passing away. I'm sorry to hear that. I hope everything's going well and you're learning and understanding how to deal with the grief and you're moving on and hopefully you find a man someday. But just because a man walks out here, puts a little game on you, you don't have to get on here with coping mechanisms, trying to trash the man out because he did what he was supposed to do. Shut this stuff down. Shut it down. Let this man know you got me. You got me. That man text you or give you a call. I'm going to tip my hat to you because you got me. That's it. Stop that. That's just my opinion. To the next video. I'm out.